dear friends, I'm honored and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you and address you, yes, as a Canadian. Uh, and uh, all that's been described as our situation is accurate from our experience as Canadians. I want to say that we're very grateful for Anglicans for Life, uh, and we have Anglicans for Life Canada, and our national director, the Reverend Vicki Hedelius, is here, and her husband, Ron. Uh, and we're so grateful for the encouragement that you bring. And I'm basically wanting to ask you to pray for us. Uh, that would mean a lot. It's not my purpose to report primarily on the dire situation which is Canada in terms of life issues, but simply to acknowledge that although there is so much we love about our country, I sadly have to report that increasingly death is taking its place in Canada and being presented as an attractive and compassionate option to solve many situations. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, as recorded in Matthew 6, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. The darkness in Canada is extremely dark. Death is presented as our friend rather than the enemy Jesus died and rose to defeat. For instance, there is not and has never been a law even to limit or discourage abortions at any stage. And what is called euphemistically as made Medical aid or assistance in dying, it used to be medical assisted suicide, but that was too bold, has in the last four years quickly become an established part of the Canadian scene. It is reported that at least 6,400, 6,700 have opted for MAID and have died in this period. For a country of 36 million people, this number means that most people would know someone or know someone who knows someone who has died by maid. And virtually every church in Anik, the Anakin Network in Canada, of which I'm the Dawson Bishop, would have been touched by at least one of these deaths in some way. One of our clergy reported to me that he is aware that in a local retirement home that he visits, a common topic of conversation is whether the time might be fast approaching when that person or they for themselves or more for their family's sake that they might want to avail themselves of maid. I expect that that's probably true all across the, our country. One of our clergy's wife is a medical doctor who as well as being a general practitioner is the director of a hospice run wonderfully by the Roman Catholic Church, not surprisingly. She reported to me that as almost, at as almost weekly occurrence, she and her board are being put under incredible pressure by their provincial government to make made part of the services the hospice offers. This is the plan to make hospice being about made. Another clergy who is a member of a hospice board reported to me that an, another hospice facility is expecting the government to take legal action against them as a hospice or at a minimum remove funding because they will not allow made and there will likely be an attempt to close them down. As we speak today, a recent and hurried move by our federal government to expand access to their, their medical aid and dying program. The areas they are considering changing include giving access to MAID for those who are not considered terminally ill, to those who wish to end their lives solely because of mental illness, or even to children they are calling mature minors. They're also looking at reducing the standard 10-day reflection period, permitting doctors or nurses to proceed without consulting the patient's family and to no longer require psychiatric assessments for patients. 
The government is rushing to update legislation because of a court case in Quebec, and so has given only a two-week opportunity for public consultation, which incidentally closes this coming Monday, January 27th. All this is to say the situation is extremely serious in my country. More than that, when the eye of a community is bad and the darkness is perceived as light, pastoral care becomes extremely difficult and complicated. So what does the church do? First, pray, pray, pray. We've got to pray, and I'm grateful that the previous speakers have spoken about the parallel between revival and action that we're seeking to take. Secondly, preach the gospel. Preach life in Jesus. Invite people to receive the invitation of life in him. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, Paul says, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Teach the word that our folk may know the truth which will set them free to life. Do what we can to protect the vulnerable and call our parishes to be life-affirming parishes, well-informed and well-ready. Stand with those who in conscience will not participate in abortions. Medical people are considering leaving their, their careers because they may be coerced into participating in MAID. But what does a pastor do when they are informed by a person in their congregation or a family member that either that person or a family member is considering requesting aid and they'd like the pastor to go and visit that person. Initially, this is very straightforward. You go. You're clear and declare from the outset that you do not consider maid an option. But when you visit, you pray for a heart that breaks for this person, for eyes that see him or her with Jesus' eyes, for the love of Christ to constrain you. Understanding that this person is in desperate need and deep confusion that the very request for made is a cry for help. You appeal to the person to look to Jesus. You help them understand that for what we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every point tapped in yet, with, yet without sin, let us therefore be confident and draw near to the throne of grace. Help them understand that in God, in all their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. Suggests gently but clearly that perhaps this horrible affliction is an opportunity to turn to Jesus. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but that was made to, was to make us not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. But what if the person tragically decides, no, they're going to proceed with choosing made and ask the pastor to stay with them while that is happening. What do you do then? This is a heartbreak. This is where the darkness being seen as light requires of you as a pastor to make the awkward, heart-wrenching decision to walk away from that room and procedure. Yes, walk away. A year ago at our fall clergy day, the day before our synod, I gave a directive to all our annex clergy which stands which says no annex clergy are to remain in the room at the time that maid is being administered. This admittedly is a huge heartbreak. It will almost certainly be received by some as heartless, judgmental abandonment of a person at their time of greatest need or of cowardice, you can't be present at a difficult time. The problem is that by remaining, no matter what you may say, you will be perceived simply by your presence that you are giving assurance that what is happening is okay and that it's gonna be okay for that person. This is absolutely not the case. This is wrong. This is evil, and it is not okay for that person. 
To die without Christ is certain judgment. Hell is real, and you must not participate in something that is hastening a person there. So my directive was you must, having begged them to choose life, if they then choose death, to continue faithfully as an Anic clergy, you must walk down the hall all the time, pray, pray, praying, that even now, maybe even in part, because you've had to walk away, that they step back from this horrible thing and choose life. Dear friends, when the darkness is seen as light and where death is presented as a friend and a compassionate solution, the church and its clergy, as they preach the gospel and call dear suffering people to Jesus, must live that out in times like this, which are extremely difficult and complex. The thief came only to steal, kill, and destroy. So abortion and maid are right down his plan. But thanks be to God, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10. 10. Thank you very much. Pray for us.